Long ago, Ireland was plagued by snakes, snakes, and more snakes. Something had to be done, so Patrick rang a snake call on his magic bell and sent all the snakes away. That is, except for one. The Last Snake in Ireland, a story about St. Patrick. Written by Sheila McGill Callahan. Illustrated by Will Hillenbrand. Everyone knows that Patrick sent the snakes out of Ireland because they were so naughty, folks were sick and tired of having them around. He tried for years to make them behave, but they just laughed at him. Then he found a gang of them teasing his old lame dog Finbar, and he lost his temper. Patrick went up a cliff overlooking the ocean and rang a snake call on his magic bell. Snakes slithered in from Kerry, they oozed from Cork, from every corner of Green Isle they answered his summons. When all of the snakes were gathered, he led them to the edge of the cliff, swinging his bell around his head, ringing it louder and louder until the trees shivered and the mountains danced. One by one, the snakes crawled down into the sea. Some became eels, some became sea serpents, and some swim all the way to the land that we call America to move in with their cousins. Patrick was very pleased with himself and was thinking of a hot, tasty bit and a seat by the fire when he heard a hissy kind of laughter. <laughs> Twined around a bush in a grassy hollow was the biggest, oldest, sneakiest snake in all of Ireland. Why aren't you off with the others? asked Patrick. I didn't want to go. That ocean is a nasty cold sort of place for an old gentleman like me. So I just stuffed some leaves in my ears so I couldn't hear your bell. I like it here at home. Patrick knew it would do no good to ring his bell again. He'd used up all its snake magic. Won't you be lonely? he asked. The snake gave Patrick a scornful hiss and slid away. Whenever Patrick went out, the snake was waiting. If he walked in the forest, the snake leaned down from a branch to tap him on the head. When he talked with his friends in the evening, the snake looked in at the window. If he sat in the doorway with a mug of buttermilk, the snake oozed up to take a swig. Patrick even found him under the quilt on his bed. Patrick thought and thought about what to do. It wouldn't be sporting to give the miserable creature no chance at all. Finally, he came up with a plan. He made a box of rare wood and lined it with wool. On the lid, he carved the snake's picture, painted as red as the Red Hound of Ulster. He fitted each side of the box with an iron bolt that would slide home when the lid was closed. Then he waited for summer to end. On the first chilly day of autumn, Patrick made his way to the snake's den by Lao Finn. The snake was not happy to see him. He really didn't like Patrick very much. He showed his fangs. What do you want? Don't you know it's time for me to go to sleep until spring? He hissed. I've been thinking about that, said Patrick. And I've worried about you all alone in that cold hole with the snow falling down and, and the ice filling in your front and back doors. 
just to show you there's no hard feelings, I've made you a fine warm house where you can lie snug all winter. You have to think about tomorrow. Got my own house, the snake said grumpily. He was very sleepy. As far as I'm concerned, tomorrow is April 1st, because that's when I plan to wake up. There's no call for you to be so touchy. I'll just leave your fine new house here by the edge of the lock in case you want to look it over. If there was one thing Patrick was sure of, it was that snakes are very curious creatures. He left the box on the shore and hid behind a bush. It wasn't long before the snake's head popped out of the hole. He looked all around. When he was sure Patrick was nowhere around, he went to inspect the box. My, my, he muttered. For sure, that's the handsomest box ever made in Ireland. He wanted it more than anything he had ever seen, but he didn't trust the four iron bolts. Maybe, he thought, I could pull the box deep into my hole so no one can lock it while I'm inside. First, I'd better make sure that it fits. He crawled onto the fine wool cushion and he fitted exactly. He was so comfortable that he would have gone to sleep then and there if Patrick hadn't popped out from behind the bush. Oh, how do you like your new house? Weera, weera, I'm undone entirely, thought the snake. Quick as a wink, he swelled himself up until he was spilling over the sides. See, it's much too small, but it was a kindly thought and I thank you. Now, now, crooned Patrick, who was standing over the box. I'm sure that if you pull yourself in a little, you'll find it a fine fit. Like lightning, he moved to slam the lid, but the snake was even faster. He erupted in a fiery streak and made for the hills, with Patrick rushing after, carrying the box and roaring at the top of his lungs. The snake slithered up one side and down the other of the Blue Stack Mountains. With the strength of his anger upon him, Patrick pushed the mountains open, forming the long glen of hunting, which you can see to this day, and lay in wait on the other side. The snake passed him too quickly to be caught and plunged into the loud urn with Patrick swimming behind. They flashed through the glens of Antrim and tip-tap-tipped across the giant's causeway where, at last, they were halted by the sea. I've got you now, me sly one, Patrick crooned as he lowered the box, hoping that the snake would jump in. And the snake was about ready to give up when an eagle swooped down and caught him in her talons. Help me, Patrick, help, he yelled. Now it's true that Patrick wanted to get rid of the snake, but not in this way. It was his snake, and he wanted the victory to be his victory. He jumped into a coracle, beached up upon the shore, laid the box at his side, and paddled after the bird. She headed over the Isle of Mall and up the Firth of Lorne, until she came to her airy above Loch Ness, where the hungriest eaglets in all of Scotland waited for their dinner. The eagle was brave. The eagle was clever. But she was no match for Patrick. With one jump, he leaped from the coracle to the nest and lifted her over his head. Gotcha! 
her beak fell open and the snake fell into the open box below. The lid snapped shut and the bolt slid into place. Patrick jumped down, overturning the boat, and spilled the box overboard. Let me out! The snake cried. Let me out and come back to Ireland. I promise I'll be good. And so I will! Patrick crooned as he righted the coracle for his homeward journey. But you'll have to wait until tomorrow! Years later, when he was much closer to being a real saint, Patrick started to worry about how the snake was doing. He made the journey to the banks of Loch Ness. I'm here, he shouted at the top of his lungs. Tomorrow has finally come. There was a troubling of the water as the surface was broken by huge red coils. Patrick jumped back in alarm as a face the size of a house loomed above him its forked tongue flickering in and out. It was his old enemy, the snake. So, he hissed, it's tomorrow, is it? You took your time. Patrick plucked up his courage. Aye, but I'm here, and you don't seem to have done too badly. Small thanks to you. As soon as I hit the water, I started to grow, and I never stopped. There's a good magic for snakes in this lock. Your puny box broke into little pieces with the pressure. He grinned. I like it here. They call me the Loch Ness Monster.